Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anime Slushy, which we regret to inform you is going to be canceled very shortly, which we've decided because of, of reasons. This is me, Cube Watermelon, for now. <laughs> this is Phoenix. Don't worry, you can still buy Anime Slushy Fun Bucks uh, up until the moment we cancel it. Yes. To purchase Anime Slushy use only. We've actually just launched our Patreon, but, you know, we are canceling it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, hey, welcome to the Magia Record Death Cast. Rest in peace, Magical Girls. Well, Magia Record English. That's true. North American Magia Record. Yeah, Japanese Magia Record's still going strong for now, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't instill confidence, does it, in the state of things in general? Well, I don't know. I, I assume this is all on the American end of things, <laughs> whatever company localized it. But yeah, so Magia Record America launched June last year, and on August 28th this year, we've got Thank you for playing Magia Record. We regret to inform you that Magia Record English will be ceasing all operations on September 29th at 11.59pm PDT. Unfortunately, after that time, the game will no longer be available to download or play. We are incredibly thankful for all the support you have given Magia Record English since its release in June of 2019. Without you, there would be no Magia record, which now there will not be. <laughs> Magia Stones will still be available for purchase until September 10th at 11.59 p.m. Paid Magia Stones cannot be refunded. Please be sure to use all of your remaining Magia Stones before 9.29. Thank you. So scummy. <laughs> Yeah, so I've never been in a gotcha that's closed down, but apparently this is a highly irregular way to go about shutting it down, which is being like, you can still give us money, but it's it's ending right now. Goodbye. Okay, see you. Yeah, and normally as well, if you purchase like whale packs, as in like, you know, the big $80 collections to get special shit, normally if you do that close to a close down, they will refund your money, you know, for obvious reasons. Not this time. <laughs> no, you can you can go ahead and keep whaling them if you so desire. That they'll, They're willing... Money, yeah. please. It's funny because, like, the fact that it, like it ended a month after the first anniversary, the first anniversary in which they had several whale packs you could buy, and a lot of big events where you could, you could purchase a lot of money and and roll for very important girls uh, that were going to be really useful going forward. And now it's gone <laughs> for that later content. I mean, this is just like this is just a reminder that you've got to be wary spending money on gachas because, like, they're not like other video games. They really just when they shut down, they go away. It's gone. You can't play it anymore. Yeah, and obviously there, to some extent that exists with other MMOs, but, you know, the ones that you pay a subscription to, you know, you still paid for the amount of time that you played and it's all pretty straightforward. But yeah, for stuff like this, you are spending money on digital goods that can disappear at any moment. Mm, yeah. But this isn't all about just it shutting down or taking the company to task or anything like that. We just kind of wanted to use this as a jumping off point to talk about Magia Record, the game in general, to talk about the first arc, which, of course, uh, they got through on the North American server and the girls and whatnot, and just kind of give it a little send off as it goes gently into the night. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. As yes, it goes gently back home. Yeah, that's true. It, it, it'll still be doing fine in Japan, and I'm sure it does much better numbers there. You would think so, yeah. Before we move on to the, the main block of this, uh, there's something that did sort of occur to me after it shut down, was that it does seem like a hard sell in not Japan in general, <laughs> in a way. No, yeah, like, I was kind of surprised that they ever localized the game. <laughs> yeah, of all the gachas that do get translated and sent over, Fate is probably the only really big one that doesn't really have much localized content, in a way. Like, some of the fake games are localized here, but Fate's also just so fucking big. And Fake Grand Order in particular is so big yeah. that it could sort of sustain itself. Where, but, like, all the other ones you see, the, like the ones that do well, like Fire Emblem or whatever, they're like they're games that regularly get translated over here anyway and have an audience. Right. Whereas Marika hasn't really had an audience in English-speaking countries for quite a while. Like, certainly not, like, the size it was when it was, like, 2011 when it was coming out. Yeah, obviously, like, it has its fans, like us, and we like the show, yeah. but we aren't this constant... I mean, and, and let's be real, like, our interest in Madoka is not the kind of thing that these games are made to monetize, which is being sexually attracted to the characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the other thing I wonder about in terms of its reception in, like, in North America. Cause, but bear in mind, un unlike a lot of other gachas, this wasn't released worldwide. It was just released in North America. I forgot about that. Yeah, if you wanted to play it anywhere else... Say you're on an iOS, all you had to do was get an American iTunes account, which is easy enough. But if you wanted to spend money, you had to fuck about like going to sketchy websites to buy gift cards to charge like to charge it up in US dollars. So it was. I always wondered why it wasn't licensed globally because you're cutting out a, a large market there. Yeah, those international licensings. It's like you know, like the music factors, and there's so many factors that I can't wrap my head around half the time. But it's one of those things where you, it, it just seems like they weren't that invested in it to begin with, I guess. 
if they weren't willing to sort of pay licensing fees to get it as out there as broadly as possible. It's sort of strange. Yeah, I guess they just kind of like some company licensed it and they were like, we'll give it a shot. And eh, it's not really doing numbers. All right, we're fucking shutting it down. Bye. <laughs> Yeah. And as you said before, the thing about uh, this is, again, this is another thing with like uh, anime. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Fake Go has some characters that are underage and you're meant to be sexually attracted to, which is terrible, but that's not the majority of the game. Like I said before, that's almost all Magic Record has on offer is just (laughs) underage mahus. Some of them in very skimpy outfits. And to be clear, like, we both played it. Obviously, I I gave up, I think I mentioned on another podcast, during, like, the second summer event, which apparently they ran, like, four of them right in a row. And now I'm wondering... They ran four of the fucking summer events in a row. Yeah, was that them desperately trying to milk the horny boys before they were going to shut it down? Like, we need that (laughs) money. We we just... What what can we do? We have to put in all those bikinis. (laughs) I mean, it might have been. It's like they were doing this thing where um, they were running events a lot faster than they were in Japan when the game originally released because they essentially they were trying to catch up. Yeah. Now I'm wondering if they were just hammering the events because that was a better way of getting people to spend cash. Yeah, I don't know. And also, yeah, god damn, just four fucking summer bikini events in a <laughs> row. Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I was basically done playing around that point as well. I came in and like ran through one of the events but like, ugh. <laughs> it's just really painful. Yeah, which kind of also goes towards, you know, part of the problem with bikini events is usually they're not going to be in very interestingly written. Though apparently the current one in Fate Go, or not current, the, the recent one in Fate Go was pretty great with the comicette and stuff, which I guess was technically a summer bikini event, but they ended up doing a completely different fun wild thing with it. <laughs> yeah, this, I mean, this is the thing with Fate Go in general. Because this, but look, the only two real gatches have put a significant amount of time into a fake go and magic record. Yeah. Also, Fire Emblem a while ago, but Jesus Christ, I, I don't want an admin job for a game that I have to pay for. <laughs> but like, Fate is a strange property. I think one of its strengths is that the characters are, are, are way more interesting than Magic Record. Oh yeah. And the plots, they're willing to go kind of wild and silly with the plots. <laughs> no, yeah, Fate Go is buck wild. You can do anything pretty much in it. <laughs> Yeah, but kind of in a fun way. Like, yeah, the last summer event was this thing where Joan of Arc Alter, who went from being like the main villain in the first big arc in Fate Go to, to just being this sort of trash girl. Yeah, so evil trash Joan of Arc. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Evil trash Joan of Arc. It turns out she once read this comic that she found at the base and really enjoyed it and then found out that good regular Joan of Arc made comics and got jealous and decided she wanted to make her own comic. Mm-hmm. But then this other character called BB who's like... uh <laughs> a rogue AI from the moon cell, which is like a, a digital world that is inside the moon. Mm-hmm. She's from other things. She turned up and she started fucking with you and put you in a time loop uh-huh. where unless you made the most popular comic, a comic hit, which is a, not comic hit, it's a servant fest, which is like a nerd festival for the servants in Fate Go in Hawaii, you never get to leave. So they just had to like keep playing the same week over and over again, making a comic. It's 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 nuts. It's yeah. nuts. It's wild and stupid. Yeah. Now let's compare that to the first summer event in Magia Record. <laughs> the girls are in the beach. <laughs> oh, they're eating takoyaki. <laughs> oh, 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 they're they're playing beach games. Oh, <laughs> volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, it's just it's, I sleep. <laughs> it's nothing. Yeah. There were very few of the events that actually stuck with me in in. Magia record and I'm not just including the summer ones just in general yeah there's like a couple but for the most part they really were just sort of generic anime stuff with these characters yeah because that's part of the problem with Magia record as initially set up is, is the girls can only get so crazy without you just having like this really stupid world full of insane girls so normally most of your writing is going to just be random teen adventures uh, doing yeah. teen stuff and yeah. like you could make this setting work and whatnot but you would have to really nail down like the character writing and, and the conflicts and whatnot which obviously they do not so no there's a handful of characters that started to grow on me as i played the game yeah but for the most part they are a bit tropey and the villains were boring for the most part, with the possible exception of Alina. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to talk about all that when we talk about the main storyline. Yeah. What was weird about the stories in Magia Record in general is that, like, it's not Madoka. Right. <sighs> like, it's, it's hard to describe. It's just sort of like there's no theme or anything. There's nothing being said. It's just we invented some characters and put them in that universe. It's very fanfic in that way. Yeah, and, like, in some ways it's trying to be Madoka. Like, in some ways it's too... 
you know, it, it's like a lot of fan works or whatnot, or uh, sequels that aren't made by the same person that made the original, where like they take a bunch of the elements and it's like, okay, I can see why you think this is in the same vein. Like there's some girls that are suffering. There's a girl that's, oh no, she's been forgotten by everyone who knew her, you know? And, and so it's like, in some ways it's very close, but obviously the feel is just completely different because you have to have 50 girls and none of them are allowed to die because you've got to collect them. <laughs> Yeah, basically. Yeah. So the story never really has any teeth. The only times it ever gets to be interesting is occasionally if a character is interesting and they're put in an interesting situation. Even if you know how it's going to turn out. Sometimes, like, like Yachio had a couple of moments like that. No, yeah, like, I like Yachio. She's grown on me. But it's one of those things where, like, the things that I like about her are rarely utilized. Yeah, yeah. Like, to me, she was interesting when you were sort of peeling back the layers of her character. Which is, I think, is it's, she's the only character they really did that with successfully. I think across across the first arc. Yeah. Irua is nothing. Yeah, I still don't give a shit about her. <laughs> no, she still she was always just a sort of generic uwu girl. Sana is just an absurd suffery sort of person. Saruno is odd in that you get the sense that there's something going on there, but they never really explore it all that well. That's the thing. So in the story, she becomes the Uwasa Tsuruno, and then it's like, oh no, she had all this other stuff going on in the background, but then they beat the Uwasa her, and then it's solved. Yeah. It's like the problem and the solution are presented at the same time, so the effect is that you have her being the exact same character she was before, functionally. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's only sort of touched on that she actually has all this sort of in a turmoil and stuff and it's even like even towards the end of the game in the last mission there's this bit where like all the girls confront like a sort of evil version of themselves or something oh yeah and and like you get to see Irua talking to herself you get to see Yachio talking to herself you get to see fucking Kanagi of all people talking to herself but then you get to Saruno and she's just back and she goes I talked to myself it was interesting and they said what happened she said it's a secret it's like, so, right, so you're just never going to... Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Why? Yeah. Yes, it's because, like, otherwise she's, she's generally likable. It just feels like, yeah, they, they just don't know what to do with her, really. Yeah. <sighs> and also, Felicia, as stupid as she was, kind of grew on me as well. Yeah, I do kind of like her. I wish her design was different, but, like... Oh, uh, well, that's true of every single character in this game. I wish their design was different. Yeah, but the angry baby thing, it, it is a, a charming. <laughs> you know what it was for me? It was one thing. It was that she liked cows. Now, is, is that because cows bring people together because family? <laughs> no, no, no. That was a stupid, stupid anime invention with the anime trying to be smarter than it was. In the game, it was much better executed. It was just, she likes cows. <laughs> and that was it. She wants to buy a mug. Ooh, there's a cow mug. Find that mug. She's playing that Farmville type game with everyone. What does she do? Nothing but cows. Because she likes cows. Yeah, I like the, the, the idea of like, that's why she has the horns like a Viking helmet is because is she likes cows. <laughs> Yeah, and that's funny. She's a fucking little kid. Yeah. And little kids sometimes just get hyper-focused on things. They're like, I like cows. Yeah, it was and penguins yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's cute. Yeah, it, it was cute. That was, that was endearing. It, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, get, like, getting back to the story, like there was no thematic idea anywhere in the thing. It had nothing to say. It was just all it really took from Madoka in the end was the mechanics of it. And even then, it sort of it threw the mechanics out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> anyway. Also, just just quickly, the ending of Arc 1 was a fucking disaster. Okay, I will say, the event, and I don't know how this is for people who played it after that event was over, the raid event. I liked that portion of it, because that portion of it, it's basically, you know, like, there's the big Walpurgis Nox there, all the magical girls from the entire game are coming together to fight it, and they play with something that they almost never do in the rest of the thing, which is that they all have these passive powers related to their wishes, so if you understand their wishes, there's a lot of things that they do during it that's like, oh, that's cool, you, could you do this the whole time? Why didn't you have more fun with that? <laughs> yeah. And it was kind of epic and they had like anime cutscenes, which was actually kind of like, whoa, whoa, we're suddenly getting those after forever. Mm. But again, I don't know how that, I assume you, you must still be able to see that content if you weren't there during the event, I would hope. Uh, you'd, yeah, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? Because otherwise it's just like Iroha won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Iroha and Yachio did a big, Yachio said to Iroha, Iroha, do you remember that secret technique that we practiced? They used it and won. I remember when Iroha, she shot herself at Ui or something, and then Ui was in a giant soul gem that was her soul gem, and then Iroha had to destroy the soul gem to get to Ui, but not in a way where destroying your soul gem usually kills you because it's fucking impossible to die in this story. Even me for you, who got her soul gem all cracked to shit, and and we're supposed to be like, oh no, will she be okay? Of course she's okay. She's perfectly fine. It's so, (laughs) it's, it's so patronizing is how it felt to me. 
It's also like the, the two, putting Alina aside for the minute, the two actual villains, Toka and Nemu, <sighs> they had just been flat out evil and horrible and painful to like sit through cutscenes of for the entire game. And then you get to the end. Oh, it's fine. They're fine. We're, they're all good now. They have no regrets. Yeah, and they remember Ui, and they're like, we regret what we did to Ui, but we don't regret anything else we did. And they said that as they were standing amongst the flaming tr- flaming wreckage of the city. Yeah, we don't regret it. <laughs> but what's funny is I feel like they must have recognized that went wrong because then in the following two events that were like epilogues to the main story, they overcorrected. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the one where you get the tree girl in your party is very strange because there's a whole weird judgment system that they come up with for judging Toka and Nemu and possibly putting them to death, which they should have. Kill them. But but what you learn is that that was set up deliberately by Toka and Nemu. They're essentially very formally committing suicide (sighs) as penance. (laughs) Look, I know they're like 11 or whatever, but I hate them very much. Yeah, they suck. They were awful stupid characters. And they set this whole story up in such a way that like, it wasn't even like they were brainwashed or something. Or They were very much responsible for their actions. Yeah. And afterwards didn't care until they did. Yeah, and it's like, it feels weird to be like, I want this 11-year-old to die, but but I, 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 I hate her very much is the thing. <laughs> Whereas, like, you might recall from when we were talking about the anime that Alina annoyed us because she was just the straight up, she's crazy character. But... By the end, she's the only one who sticks to her guns and remains crazy and just wants to kill everyone. And it was almost sort of refreshing. No, yeah, by the end, I was like, I don't know. I'm almost starting to to stand because she's just like, <laughs> what, you guys, you don't want to kill everyone anymore? Okay, I'll just kill everyone then. I mean, that's what I'm here for. But bleh. <laughs> And then they don't even have the fucking guts to kill her off. They're like, oh, no, she's missing. I wonder if she's okay after she tries to kill everyone because she's insane. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but Nemu, Nemu also has some other consequences. She's in a wheelchair. You know, because sometimes you use your magic real hard and then you're in a wheelchair because this is Yukiuna now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking stupid. We're wandering a bit, probably. Sorry. Um. Look, no, this is our vent cast. We have to tell you about all of our thoughts about Magia Record. <laughs> it's stupid that Nemu's in a wheelchair is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the start for a second. Okay. The arc in general, how did you feel about it, the first arc? (laughs) I mean, like, there were some interesting aspects of it, and I feel like if you showed me an outline, I'd be like, this is okay. Like, the fact that they tried to set up this system to where they could bypass Cubay or whatever, that's kind of interesting. But the execution is so... There was actually quite a bit of plot to get through, but they end up wasting so much time spinning their wheels, walking around, looking at different rumors, especially like in the later chapters when you're getting near the finale, but they're still just kind of wandering around dealing with different rumors. It's like, you couldn't do something more interesting here? Yeah. There was also the thing, I think part of why Nemu and Toka was so annoying was that at no point were they ever really thwarted. They did that thing that you see done with kids show villains sometimes where it's like, no matter what sort of success the heroes have, the villains are always all part of the plan, it, which is really frustrating. I don't, like yeah. This happened in Young Justice as well and really gave me the shits where it's like, it sort of undercuts anything the heroes are doing in an annoying <laughs> way. And it also just like, it, it also just, it just smells of bullshit. How could the villains have anticipated this much happening? But she's just so smart in her cranium hyperbellum. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Fucking dialogue. <laughs> It's just one of those things where it's like, I like to see villains that are also smart and respond in smart ways, not are just, oh, they're smart because the story said they're smart. Yeah. That was very much Toko and Nemo. They were just constantly just uh, annoying. And like, what's one of the big parts of the later finale is just Iroha suddenly remembering the super important rumor that she made with them, the fucking cherry blossom thing. And then so she just kind of like goes off with Sana to deal with that. And it's like... We could have skipped so much of this story if you just happened to fucking remember this. What? What? (laughs) (laughs) They needed her in the end for something. Did they need her? I don't remember if they actually needed her in the end or not. The tree girl? It was just part of remembering. By that stage, you were already certain that Yui was real, which was always something something that bugged me is that they didn't play with that more. Like the idea that maybe these memories are made up. Yeah, I mean, they try, but it's like we know as viewers, uh, obviously she's real. (laughs) Yeah. We saw the game opened with fucking Homura seeing that vision of her. Yeah. So so when they're like, maybe you're just imagining it, Iroha, it's like, well, clearly she's not. <laughs> We've seen her sprite <laughs> speaking to Homura. 
Oh, but it was her sprite in costume, so you'd never recognize the two. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but it was just because they needed that cherry blossom to, you know, because the girls just kept completely refusing to believe Ui was a thing. And then they saw the cherry blossom this is blossom. And then they're like, I guess she's a thing. Yeah, but then they still didn't care until Ui was broken out or something. Yeah, whatever made them suddenly remember her properly. Oh, yeah. And, and then there was that, that cut scene with all the s- memories coming back and they're like, whoa. Yeah, there were so many final attacks <laughs> at the end there. They were just like, the last few chapters were just lots of, it's the big attack. Oh, this wasn't the end. Oh, it's the big attack. Oh, that wasn't the I end. do feel like that does tend to happen with Fate Go too. <laughs> yeah, it does. You, you have to put a lot of rounds in there for the gotcha players. So yeah, everything has to like keep escalating and escalating, but you're already on such a level where it's like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it it also does that annoying thing that you get in gacha sometimes where it's like you have a fight with someone who you're very leveled up against and the fight ends very quickly. But then you get back to the cuts and it's like, he's too strong. Oh, yeah, that happens all the freaking time in in this game. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Which is weird because like I thought for the longest time that Magia Record was avoiding that by just never justifying the fights. <laughs> like, in each stage, or half the time it would just it'd be everyone sitting at home having dinner and then it would cut to a fight and then it cut back to them having dinner. Like the fights didn't really matter. But then by the end, they stole so much that it, like the fight against that fucking bear tree. Oh, Holy yeah. shit, that took forever. Like it was, and it was so just sort of, Oh, I'm at, someone new comes in. Oh, I'm at my limit. Someone else comes in. Oh, I'm at my limit. Yeah, and again, like th- that's when you get like the whole, oh no, her gem's broken, but obviously she'll be fine. Oh no, it, it's so. And they kept doing, you know, because part of the problem with this whole setup is that if you can just cleanse your soul gem by doppling, there's no limit on how much you could fight or whatever because you can't run out of magic. It's impossible. So instead, they do this whole thing like, oh, we still have plenty of magic, but we're exhausted. Did. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you need to nap? Yeah. yeah. This fucking doppel. This doppel yeah. all the time. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the... That was part of the problem with the system in general is that even if, especially at first when they tried to sort of play doppling off like it was dangerous and they, they really pushed that in the anime. But the further the game goes on, you realize it's not. Yeah. It's not dangerous at all. Like they completely took any risk out of that's part of the problem with this setting in general is that they just that, like they've taken Monica and reworked the setting so no one can ever die. <laughs> yeah. Even the traditional things like soul gem shattering. You can't even die of that anymore. What if Madoka but literally nothing bad could happen? I don't know. Then I guess it's pre-cure, but, but now it's horny. <laughs> and like, th- yeah, the doppel thing, I feel like they could have tried to sell it with going doppling, make it super unpleasant, you know, like super scary. Maybe mm. you accidentally hurt people when you do it. But it's it's pretty clear that no, going doppel is just a power up and then you're completely refreshed. So why would you ever not? And even like Mifuyu's big death scene, which isn't a death scene, is this whole thing of her like using all of her power at once and it'll overload her gem and stuff. And like in this scenario, in this setting, a gem shattering is you can still die that way. That's still a way that there's something that can kill you. Yeah, that should be the one way you can still die. <laughs> yeah. And the gem shatters and then Irua turns up and does a heal because Irua's magical protagonist. And yeah, that's fine. <sighs> The worst thing is, considering Mifuyu's like arc in the game, of the villains, she's like the closest you get to a rational one. And it's kind of like, like she made mistakes and bad decisions and everything. And then for a long time, she was, she was justifying the villainous things by trying to take responsibility for the people she'd roped in. And then at the end, she was like, there was this whole sort of thread at the end of her going, okay, now it was, I was always fucked. I was always a coward. And now I'm okay with dying now because I feel like that's penance for what I've done. But of course, She's not dead. Yeah, yeah. If she had died. If she had died, it would have been good. And like, you know, Fate Go has done this. You can still have the character. Like, it's not that weird if people still have the character in their inventory and can use her in a fight, but she's dead in the game. But I, I guess the idea is like, but then we can't put her in later events. But, you know, have have a single fucking commit to anything ever. <laughs> you, you can give up one character for your sexy bikini events. God damn it. I guess to be fair, like to be fair in terms of criticizing Fake Go, Fake Go does pull that a bit where like someone will die. But it, but if you summon them, it's like, oh, you've just summoned them. So like that, it's just another version of them. So it's fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one of the more recent events had, so Akita is yeah, one of the gay characters along with Nobu, who then became a more serious character because they keep doing events with her. And now there's Akita Alter, <laughs> who's an agent of the Counterforce from a universe where Akita's mom made a pact with the mm-hmm, Counterforce. Mm-hmm. And she shows up in this event that's set in like 1890s Japan. 
It, look, point is, at the end of the story, like she just finally gets all her memories back, but then she's done. She has to, she has to like die. This is a rare thing for Fat Girl. It actually, the, the scene where she dies actually did get me a bit, where it was like, oh, this, this is really sad. Yeah. And then like the the very next scene, she's just a chill day. It's fine. <laughs> like, but again, fate is like that. Fate stakes are very different. Yeah, it's all like this weird, like reality ending kind of shit. The thing with fate stakes is that like fate is constant ass pulling. The, the entire plot is ass pulling, right? So the stakes are: is the ass pulling going to be funny, or is it going to be kind of awesome, or is it going to suck? <laughs> yeah, that's the stakes. Because yeah, like sometimes the ass pull is kind of hilarious in how stupid it is. Sometimes the ass pull is actually like, oh, that's a rad idea. And then sometimes the ass pull is like, well, that was lame. There's no stakes otherwise. Yeah. Whereas in this game, Magia Record tries to sort of act like it does have stakes, but then it doesn't. It's, it's a much more generic, like just bad writing in that sense. Yeah. Ugh. So not interesting. And what's funny is that apparently like the first arc is the good one and the second one is supposed to be much more of a mess. So I'm kind of sad that we'll never get to see that in the North American version. <laughs> Uh, look, to be honest, I was kind of like, fine. When I found out with that it was going away, I was like, I'm, I'm kind of okay with this because like aside from anything else, the costumes in Magia Record, I feel like as they kept introducing new characters just progressively got worse. Oh yeah. That seemed to be holding true for the next arc. Like particularly the main three villains, ugh. Yeah, and like the, all the Ume Aoki designs just keep getting more and more. It feels like she ran out of ways that she feels like she can make an original looking character as a magical girl. So it's like, this one just looks like a weird Toho. This one is like a sexy band person. And it's like, what are these? This is just fucking messes. Just do a nice dress. It's fine. Yeah. They don't all have to be unique. But maybe it's, but this is a gacha thing. Maybe they do. No. Look back at your first girls that you made for Madoka and they were good designs and do more like that. <laughs> Look at my mummy. Should we talk about the characters in general? Yeah. So it's good go the bad the ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We kinda already talked about the main characters. Yeah. The thing that bugs me about Magic Record in general is that everyone gets a midriff. Yeah, it's so And it's annoying. Perfunctory. <laughs> It's super functory and annoying and everyone gets it and it's stupid. And even like Yachio, who's wearing a full length dress in any of the official art, her belly button is always like really clearly outlined and it's just gross. Yeah, and a lot of times like that leg slit is real far up. <laughs> yeah, just ugh. We haven't really talked about fucking Kanagi, who is like this weird character who gets introduced kind of halfway through and becomes like one of the main team kind of. And her design is a fucking mess and it feels like it has like almost nothing to do with her character. No, okay, so this is the thing about Kanagi. Her event was one of the only events that stuck with me a little bit. Just because it was su she's such an odd character and the event was so fucking weird. Oh, is that the one that was from the past about all the weird stuff happening between the different uh, regions of the city? No, it was the one where she got a job at a maid cafe. Oh, right. I skipped through <laughs> most of that, to be honest, because I was like, oh, dumb uh, maid cafe shenanigans. Click, 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 click. No, it was actually like for a maid cafe story. Here's the thing, right? Like her character, she's a very sort of like serious leader type character. Yeah. She's sort of, she was the head of the gangs in the, I can't remember which ward, but it's like the poor ward. It's where all, Daito ward. It's where all the poor people live. Yeah. And are, and are sort of looked down on by the rest of the city. But her costume is very much uh, step on me dominatrix. Yeah, which doesn't really feel like her character. Like, like she's very serious and deadpan and she's psychic. And then, so of course, she has a riding crop and is gonna steppy on you. Yeah, big, big thigh high boots. Yeah. Yeah, she's weird, annoying. The thing that I liked about the stupid Mac Cafe event, though, was that, like, despite the fact that that's a costume, she was no good at being a maid because she was too serious and she had slight steppy energy. Yeah. Where all the other maids, or you had like the distinct, you know, the really chunny maid or the, yeah, she wasn't good at being any of the tropes. And so that was like a struggle until she eventually figured out this way of doing like a sort of half sundere type thing where she just, she would just walk up to you and tell you how it was going to be, but she wasn't like, she was completely deadpan about it. But also Karen was there. I don't like Karen a lot. Karen was a nice character. <laughs> well, you have to say it Karin or it sounds like you're talking about a Karen. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, there was a Karen. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, this order isn't what I wanted. And then she stepped on her. <laughs> and Karen's very good. I like Karen a lot. Yeah, she's fun. Yeah, she's just this little kid who, her outfit is decidedly unhorny, which is nice for the most part. Yeah, and like whenever she would interact with Alina, it was like the only times Alina would just act like a person. And I really liked Alina when she was around Karin and interacting with her, like just as this tsundere, super serious artist girl. <laughs> yeah, they're both artists. That was the thing, Karen. 
really likes manga, and she had this one character she likes, who her costume resembles, I think, is the idea. I, I forget, yeah. Something like that. But yeah, any of the events she was in, I don't know, she was just fun. She was just a fun little kid character. Yeah, I like her. Speaking of fun characters, there's the one character I got really attached to. Oh yeah, you guys talk about your girl. Yeah, me too. Despite the fact that her outfit is a fucking crime. Her outfit is otherwise nice, except it just has, for some reason, the sides of her shirt are just not there. Yeah, that's all those apartment girls. They all have like, oh, this this is actually really nice art. And it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> like Layla from the waist up. Hey, this looks like, wait a fucking minute. <laughs> Okay, to be fair, Layla's is much more obvious what the problem is. She's just not wearing pants. Yeah, but if you see her, it, it, like, from the waist up, like, in a sprite, it's like, oh, this looks cool. I, I like this, like, kind of kimono thing. That she goes, Why does she have fucking pants? Yeah, and then Seika. She, yeah, she's just less interesting. But yeah. the, the suit still kind of form fits around her boobs, even though it looks like it shouldn't. And it's like, okay, okay. <laughs> The thing with Mito is that Mito is not normally a character I would like because she is just, well, how would you describe her? Uh, uh. <laughs> she is as uh, as you could possibly be, but I don't know what it was. Something about her dialogue and the voice acting, it just kind of got to me. And like her face and, and hair whole situation and stuff is very cute. <laughs> Yeah, it is. And she's also like, her side story is the only side story I played when nothing bad happens. <laughs> like, she's the only character who got through Madoka without like suffering whatsoever. <laughs> her story is her and her friends go to a different part of the city and they spot a flower shop and they help run for a second while one of the other characters has to run off and do something. And that was nice. And then so she goes and visits them at the actual shop and she wants to get, she wants to make some presents for her friends. And so they have to go searching for special flowers. And then the next episode is they go searching for special flowers and find them. And she gives them the gifts. And that's the whole story. This sounds like I would sleep. <laughs> it sounds dumb. And normally, like I said, I don't like Uwu characters generally. Normally I would hate this. But I don't know what it was. She just got to me. <laughs> She was just so cheery and positive and yeah, oh, damn it. But yeah, that shows you like, that's the thing with a story like this where everyone's more or less a normal girl is you just like have to really nail the character writing to make anyone care. Yeah. And this, this is the thing. I feel like for that one, at least for me, it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Ignoring the awful costume for the minute, but yeah. Well, speaking of which, like, I'll talk about a girl I like who's Shizuku Hozumi. She's the, if you've played or, or seen, she's the purple girl with the big round bladies. And oh, yes. she's super deadpan. And her design, so obviously she needs more shirt, granted. <laughs> but otherwise, I feel like she looks the most like she could be a Madoka character. Yeah. In some ways, like, there, there's a nice, like, elegance to it. The palette is that kind of pastel that these girls used to have. And her whole thing is that she's, like, depressed and feels like she needs to find a place where she belongs and like her writing just really did it for me i'm like oh girl same <laughs> yeah and she was her outfit and weapons were sort of unique in a way that like didn't feel totally forced like it has with some of the other newer designs yeah like again it, it feels like an actual like believable magical girl design like if she was in a tv show that would make sense to me <laughs> instead of mm, some of these girls yeah. that are just like a fucking mess and also she can teleport to anywhere in the world which is kind of op but i like that sometimes it does end up getting used like in the nanoha event the mirror version of her ends up being what caused it because it was able to like create a portal between nanoha world and this one and i like the, that they actually like used her for that <laughs> Occasionally, they remember to use the shit. <laughs> yeah. We should also probably talk about Hinano. Hinano, yeah. God, sometimes I love her. No, this is the thing, especially towards the end of the first arc, she gets really involved. And her actual character is good. Like, she features in Rika's story quite a lot. Yeah. She features in a lot of the side stories. I almost got the feeling the writers quite liked her. <laughs> she would pop up a lot, and her character was sort of fun. She's like a science girl. She's a lot older than she looks. She's like, she's very short. Her outfit's a bit dumb, and then it's like the... She's wearing like a lab coat that's way too long. So like the sleeves are always over her hands and stuff. No, I'm fine with that part. That's adorable. Yeah, it's just, and like she throws potions. That's a sort of a power. She's a bag full of little potions that she throws that explode and stuff. Yeah. Everything about her is good except her art. Yeah, it's a lowly con thing. And it, so yeah. it, it's like this whole thing where she's 18, you know? So she wants to be seen as older than she is and, and she wants to be seen as sexy. But then you look at her art and it's clearly like, oh, it's a sexy widow baby. Ooh, yeah. But it's okay because she's 18. Boo, 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 boo. So it's that kind of thing. <laughs> it is also got the illustration style is the style of someone who's clearly done a lot of lolicon stuff before. Yeah, it has that energy. <laughs> 
It's just got that that particular type of shading and the sheen to it and stuff, and it's just ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> you can sense it, but yeah, it's like again, like when she's just hanging out with people, being the cool kind of like veteran who's also you know kind of easily embarrassed and whatnot. I'm like, oh no, I like her. <laughs> 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 okay, speaking of characters you liked, but like characters both like, let's talk about the only really good team in the whole game. Nanaka, I mean, I feel like we already talked about them a lot when we covered our episodes of the show and whatnot. I suppose we did, but still, it's worth talking about. They, the, all the designs were pretty good, I thought. Yeah, and they all have interesting characters. They're better than the main scene. Give them their own shop. <laughs> <laughs> like Keiko in particular is very cute. Oh, Kako? Kako, sorry. Kako is very cute. Yeah. Akira's fine. The outfit's a bit of a mess. Yeah, see, so it's like her, Kako and Akira, like, I would mess with their outfits a bit. Like, just fucking clean <laughs> that shit up a bit, simplify it a bit, and make it a bit less dumb. But, yeah, I like the overall shapes and the colors and whatnot. Mm. Mayui is a bit, her character's a bit sort of... She's the China one! Yeah, it feels like this is, I don't know enough to say this is probably racist, but it does feel like it's probably racist. No, yeah, she's definitely that kind of, like, China kung fu, blah blah blah, like Maylene from... Connected to the organized crime stuff. Yeah, so she's definitely stereotypical, but, like, I, I do still like her. <laughs> Yeah. Because she's still like, she's kind of cool. She's trying to help out. And, you know, like she's, she's got that crime family. That's the kind of like, we're, we're just kind of running the city from the shadows, but in a way where we want to keep everyone playing well together and, and mostly just do good things. Yeah. Which is <laughs> just such a fantasy. Look, I've heard that there's Japanese towns where the Yakuza just like kind of runs the town just like, like a local government would, <laughs> but, the, but also they're just the Yakuza. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot going on there. <laughs> And then there's Nanaka, who had one of the most interesting wishes in the game. Yeah, and she's a badass bitch. Yeah, she's very cool. In terms of game mechanics, she got like her full awakening, is where you get to take them up to five stars, probably like halfway through the run, which made her very useful. She was very good. She was, she was a big part of the meta. Yeah, she's great. Also, just like those designs, I don't feel looked like particularly Madoka-ish designs, but they did look really good together because they were like all really contrasting colors and sort of styles and shit. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah, and it's like when they showed up in this show, it, w it was like, oh, they look nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my girls. Now, in terms of disappointing characters, um, characters that disappointed you in particular, uh, Amy. <laughs> Amy Airy. She looks like a yeehaw. She has a really cute fucking cowgirl design, but it turns out she has like no yeehaw energy. Her entire character is just that she has a crush on a boy and her fucking wish was to know if he likes her back. And she found out he does. And still her entire thing is that she's never going to ask this boy out. And I hate her. It's so boring. <laughs> yeah, it's just, there's just nothing to her. And it's just like, no, this was my yeehaw. Uh... Like one of her voice clips, if you have her on the home screen, is like, I like barbecue, but I'm worried about it making me fat. And then one of the boy doesn't like me, me. Ugh, yeah. And she's drawn by the fucking Ori emo guy, which makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> There's Konomi, who I liked as a character and thought she was cute. The disappointing part was that she was a rubbish unit. Yeah, she's got a cute design, but I do think her design has very big two-star energy. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get the sense that she's not that strong. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really interesting thing to me about gotchas, is that like certain designs are just like, this feels like a low-rank character. <laughs> it's hard to describe. Yeah, but I know, I know what you mean. She also is notable for being an anime girl who has scissors who's not insane. Nice. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's a nice flower girl. I like her. Yeah, yeah. She was in all of Mito's side stories, so obviously they got along well. Yeah, sometimes she would hang out with Kako and Kaede, and they would just have like a, a nice girls club, and I always thought that was really cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime that Kaede was away from her main team, she seemed to be having a much better time. <laughs> yeah, when she's not around Rena. I've got to say, the two characters who are actually dead, I quite liked both of them. I don't really have any feelings about Mel. I, I just, I like the design. I don't know. And she was sort of cute, like all, all fun, I guess. Yeah, she's all right. I definitely liked Kaene. Kanae? Kanae. Her design has issues, mostly the whole side boob thing. But I did like the sort of punk girl <laughs> sort of aesthetic. No, yeah, she's another one that like, I would just edit on a few more clothes in various places, but otherwise I really like the thrust of her design. <laughs> yeah. She's got that big pipe that she hits people with, like a smoking pipe. Yeah. And it, her side story, her wish was interesting in that it, a friend of hers was about to get attacked by some gang leader and Kyube showed up and she wished the gang would disappear. Oh. It turned out that all that really meant was that the gangs in the area reformed. 
Oh, and while boo. they got, it got her friend out of the particular situation. Even the dude who did it was still around. So and then and then she was stuck hunting witches until she met up with uh, Yachio and uh, Mifuyu. I don't know. Yeah, her, her story was kind of nice. <laughs> the her other thing was that like um, she kept complaining about how her face got her into a lot of fights because she looks like a rough girl. Yeah. So she, so does. she had to fight. <laughs> <laughs> But like her story was actually kind of sad because she's like hanging out with a few and Yachio was nice and she hung out with Yachio's grandmother a lot who was still alive at that point. It was very nice to her in a way that her parents hadn't been. Yeah. Yeah, and then she started to get into music. She joined a band and then she dies. <laughs> Which, oh. <laughs> but she was fun and she had a nice, yeah, she had a unique design. I quite liked her. Yeah. I got to talk about Rika and Ren. Okay, yes. Yes, so I, I brought it up when we talked about the show, but Rika is the canon gay. There's no ambiguity. She's gay. She liked a girl. Her wish was that the girl would like her back, but then she realized that she should let that girl be with a guy that she liked, and, and, and she learned a lesson, and it was all good, and it was kind of sweet, and she's cool. And Ren is constantly paired up with her. She seems gay for her. I like both of their designs, and they have a unit together where they're a pairing, but it's still like they still won't let them get together of course and it's so extra frustrating for me because it's like we know at least one of these girls is actually no question gay they're so close <laughs> it's sort of weird that they do that where unlike a lot of like moe anime they're quite happy to say oh this girl's gay she likes girls but then they won't just have a couple up with someone like why not yeah but it's like they did give her a girl that is that is her otp and it's very obvious just yeah we're gonna let them get together <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, why not? You've already taken the first, like, you've taken the, the first much larger step. I guess because of this reaction that I have, you know, like, in a way it is compelling emotionally, but <laughs> because I'm, like, more media savvy or whatever, I'm like, I hate you manipulating me this way, you fucking cowards. But I guess <laughs> if, if you're just, like, a more easily pleased fan, you're just like, ooh, I just want them to get together so much. Ooh, they're really pulling my strings. But no, fucking let them get together. <laughs> Rika's side story as well was quite nice. Also, again, featuring Hinano because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, just the whole thing with her, like, she gets the relationship she wanted, but it just doesn't feel right. And Hinano sort of prods her and just, like, eventually admitting that she knows what she's doing is wrong. Yeah. And giving up on it, even though it breaks her heart and everything. And, yeah, oh, it's sad. And the way that she, like, <laughs> you know, she's comforting Hinano about, like, hey, you're not weird, you know, like, I'm good at being supportive for other people. But then she also has to learn to internalize that message. And, and that it's okay that she gay. <laughs> and she can tell him and it's cool and it's good. It, it, it's very affirming in a surprising way. Yeah. Again, which is why it's so strange. They won't just let him get together. Let them curse. Let them curse. <laughs> One other character who really stuck out to me, despite the fact that I don't think we've actually gotten a proper sprite for them yet, mm. is you. Why you? <laughs> you know you? Yeah, the fucking weird unicorn girl. Yeah. So you is... The only time I saw her was in, is it Nagisa? Oh, so you didn't, she gets worse once you learn her backstory. She gets stupider. Ah, uh, okay. It was in one of the summer events, actually, but it's, it's super edgelord. And I was like, oh, she was actually kind of interesting, but this is, now this is just dumb. Yeah, see, in Nagisa's story, she was sort of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> her wish is, it, we don't actually quite know what her wish was, just that she has a list of people who are definitely evil. Like, they're, they're bad people. And she goes around killing them. Yeah, but she's very deadpan and matter of fact about it. She's just like, no, no, it's cool. These are all evil people and I'm, and I'm just going to kill them. Don't worry. Yeah. And like in Nagisa's story, she she ends up killing Nagisa's mother. And also there's this, again, which part of why Nagisa's story stuck with me. There's this other magical girl we meet who was sort of like an exploration of the idea of what if a magical girl just wasn't really doing her job. <laughs> yeah. Which was sort of interesting. Like this is, a, it was, all, you know what it was? It was always when a story was set not in Kamihama. It was always when it was set back in the original universe with the original rules that they managed to like sort of toy with something interesting with the setting, which was in this case, yeah, what if there was a girl who just wasn't wasn't really doing her job properly? There's this one magical girl that Kyubei keeps nagging to like start capturing more wishes because her soul gem's getting cloudy and she's just not really providing the grief seeds. And she ends up having a run-in with you because you wants to kill this girl's boyfriend because he's a gang member and he is a shithead. Like he's a bad dude. Yeah. But this girl keeps insisting that he's okay. And in the end, she ends up having to fight you and that causes her to turn into a, into a witch. But yeah, it, there's something really compelling about you with the way, like just how straightforward and deadpan and, and doesn't quite understand why people get upset with her. <laughs> yeah, like in terms of crazy murder girls, of which this game has too many, uh, I find yes. her the most interesting in that way. 
Yeah, in that like she's not she's not running around going. Oh, oh, oh. She's just like no, did, no. It's I've, I've got this list. Do, do you not get it? Like everyone on the list is evil. Like it's I'm not going to kill you. You're not on the list. That's okay. What, what are you upset about? <laughs> What's funny is like that event was apparently in Japan. It ran after the event where you learn her stupid edgy backstory. So like I think we ended up liking her more than we should have because we <laughs> got things out of order. <laughs> Yeah, which is a shame. Yeah. And to be fair, the Nagisa story was also extremely edgelord. Oh, God, it's so stupid. That was one of the ones that was written by... Um, Inukuri. Yeah, which explains a lot. Like, it's just... <laughs> Nagisa likes spooky stories where people die, and then her mother's bad and abuses her, and then her mother's dying and she watches her die, and then the next day she turns into a witch. Yeah, Nagisa, this, this tiny child, makes the decision not to save her mom, and it's very... Whoa, the edge... And what's weird as well is that, like, I don't feel like Nagisa was meant to be written that way when they sort of introduced her in, in Rebellion. No, she's just a fucking little baby who wished for cheesecake. Yeah, but in this story, they in this story, you know, Carrie turned it around so the wish for cheesecake was a way of her saying, fuck mum, I'm not saving her. Like, yeah, it was like, <laughs> how can we make this cheesecake wish edgy as fuck? <laughs> <laughs> And and they and they did manage to do it to their credit and then clap 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 clap. <sighs> so dumb. What I liked in that story was everything that wasn't Nagisa. Yeah. Well, that said, the opening couple of chapters was like Nagisa just sort of questioning Kube about how all this worked, which was kind of interesting. That thing of like a smart girl having a conversation with Kube and asking all the right questions to begin with. Yeah, I like when Kube gets frustrated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was some of the best content in the game was Cuba getting frustrated with girls who don't play along with him yeah <laughs> like the chef girl who was just like no I, I don't need you it's fine and he's just like come on <laughs> <laughs> or his interactions with Lena were kind of funny as well in her stories where like she just keeps calling him a ferret and he's like I'm, I'm not a ferret <laughs> like gets, he gets weirdly prickly about that and then like at the end, right before Alina kills herself, because of course she does, because that's the sort of character she is, he finally gets her to wish and she, but she makes a wish and becomes a magical girl. He's like, okay, so now what you do is you go and fight witches and she goes, no, I'm not doing that. And then just jumps off a building and dies. <laughs> but she doesn't. And there's a fucking continuity error with the way that plays out in her side story versus the way the order of events in the main story with how she teamed up with the girls versus when Ui became the big monster thing and everything. It doesn't work out. I'm on to you. You fucked it up. Her whole involvement in the main story is very fudged. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when and how did they become friends with her and know what her whole deal is and what? And she just happened to walk up at the exact right time and her, her power set was the exact power set that they needed to solve that problem. It was, it's very... Uh, this. Yeah, it, it feels very like, we'll figure out how this makes sense later. Oh, wait, we have to do this chapter right now? Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what I did love, though, the one thing that I genuinely like killed myself laughing at was when I finished Alina's side story. <laughs> her, her personal memoria card <laughs> is the fucking best. It's a card of just after she kills herself. And she killed herself as an art piece because she's an artist. Yeah. And the way she kills herself, she just it's just video footage of her lying flat on her face in a pile of flowers. Yeah, and it's really funny because, like, I'd seen the memoria in my inventory for the longest time. But, you know, like, I never really looked at the full thing. So it, I just thought, like, it was, like, just a bed of flowers or whatever. But no, her fucking dead-ass body is just laying face down in the middle of them. And it's, it's unintentionally really funny. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. Uh, art. <laughs> That's yeah. what us artists are like. <laughs> Speaking of art, there were three characters who I think were in a team whose art always kind of bothered me. Konona. Oh, Konoha? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you didn't have that event. Kazuki and Ayame. Ayame. Which is... <laughs> Konoha, Hazuki, and Ayame. <laughs> Thank you. They're very shiny and their eyes are weird. I don't like them. Yeah, there's that art style that's like a little too rendered in that very specific kind of anime way. Yeah. And also Ayame is like, one of her traits is that she's one of the babies, like Felicia and stuff. Like she's one of the younger girls, but her outfit is still very, nope, n not for a baby. Mm -mm. <laughs> she's not drawn like that either. She doesn't look that young. It's weird. Yeah, it's unpleasant. There's also like, there's characters whose entire getup is just confusing, like Rio. She's a reporter... She has a camera, but she also has a bazooka. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these girls are just like, this is this, this, this gacha thing where a lot of them just have too much going on. Even Matama is like that. Like she, her outfit doesn't look super busy necessarily, but it's just, there's just like a lot of details and there's just nothing to really catch your attention. And it's just kind of bleh. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't sort of ride thematically. Yeah. One of the babies I did like, Rico. Rico was kind of cute. 
Wait, which one was Rico? She was the one with the um the big oh, citrus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wand. She's a baby. And you know what's funny as well? Her side story felt like someone doing a children's version of Madoka in a kind of cool way. Oh, yeah. Where like she's completely unaware that Kyubei's bad. And the story isn't played like Kyubei's bad. He's just a mascot character. So like she ends up in this sort of dream world and where she's feeling bad about the fact, like she wants to help her parents cook food at, her, at their shop, but she's not very good at it. And like, yeah, because she's a baby. She's still learning. You know, she needs to learn how to chop things properly. Yeah, simple boy. She's feeling bad about that. And so she has this dream where she just keeps shrinking smaller and smaller. And like as a representation of, you know, her own self-esteem and shit. But then it ends up with this point where Kube finds her. And because she's so small now, she can ride Kube around like a horse. Yeah, there's, there's a sea of that is great. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then she goes into battle in the back of Kube and she's a Kube knight. And it's just, yeah, it's cute. <laughs> yeah, and her design is just not sexy at all. It's just fucking adorable. Yeah, it's just, it's just a little baby Mahu. And someone she's friends with, which is very important, is like the girl, rest in peace. This is the most important girl to actually talk about with the death of North America. Sir so Ashley Taylor will never forget you. <laughs> <laughs> we really won't. Yeah, the America exclusive. I assume they'll bring her to the JP server because it just seems wasteful to not. It's very strange, though. She's a very strange character. No, she's great. Like, I, she sucks. I love her. Because <laughs> <laughs> her whole thing is that she's a fucking weeb and, and she's a weeb for, like, gothic Lolita fashion. And so she, like, she's from California, but she learned Japanese so she can come see Japanese fashion and she loves to blog about it. And, and wow. She uses gratuitous Japanese a lot. Yeah, like she'll use terms like Gurokawa, like, you know, which is the combination of uh, creepy and cute and stuff. And like other girls will be like, what are you talking about? And she's like, nah, I'm in the scene. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, w when you say that she's friends with Rico, the thing is that she's friends with everyone. And that was like her event. She didn't really have an event. They just they did this thing that Magic Rico does sometimes where like every day you log in, they just give you a new cutscene. You can't skip <laughs> Which yeah. is very annoying sometimes. But her whole scene was just, it, it had such Mary Sue energy. <laughs> where it was just her running around, running into all the characters, and all the characters say, oh, hi, Ashley, you're my friend. And she goes, yeah. And like, <laughs> Yeah, wow, Ashley, of... you're so cool. You have the best fashion. We all love that foreign girl, Ashley. And yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it does kind of feel like it was made to pander to the Western fans. Like, ah, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I went to Japan and everyone was amazed by all my knowledge of nerd things that they don't know as much about as me. And <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like I like her but I don't think I like her in the way that I'm supposed to like her because I don't think you're supposed to be like eh, look at this trash weeb she sucks I love her but th that's how I interpret her <laughs> so I, like it. I think it's fair I think that's a fair way to like her I mean uh, yeah, I don't think that was the I don't think that was the intention but. yeah but I'm like this is shameful but it's, it's pretty good <laughs> she is shameful that's the thing she's really shameful yeah so I like her in the way that I like Rhea. It's like, look, look at this goofus rich girl. <laughs> I don't know if it was a joke that someone in the server pulled from the, in the Discord pulled from somewhere else or something, but it was a thing about like Madoka and Homura find Madoka's little brother drawing <laughs> Ashley in the sand. Oh yeah. Ashley. Oh, she has four blast discs. So oh, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's been some great memes about her like going up to be with Godoka and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because she's, she's the only one that isn't moving on. <laughs> yeah. But maybe she'll be added to the JP server at some point. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but for now, she's in limbo. Yeah. One other thing I, w I think is worth maybe talking about is the versions of the original characters that appeared in Magireco and the way they were a bit different. Oh, yeah. Because for the most part, it was bad. With maybe the exception of Mami, I thought they managed to do something kind of interesting with her at times. Yeah, see, because I keep thinking about how it kept going in the story where it's just like, haha, she's still mind controlled, even though we, we, we've gone past this and we understand now that she was kind of mind controlled, but also kind of had problems that led her to be mind controlled. But, blah, 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 but she's still the sexy holy mommy. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, don't get me wrong. The outfit sucks. <laughs> it's a terrible outfit. Yeah. But she sort of once they finally break her mind control, there was like this sort of interesting reflection she has where like, she was sort of grateful that, in an odd way, that she did get turned and joined with Inuasa because it gave her time to process the truth about magical girls, which I thought was an interesting idea. It did actually like play with things that we know about her as a person in a new way, which you can't yeah. really say for any of the other girls. No, no. Like, H Homura gets completely neutered, essentially. Yeah. She just sort of goes along with everything because, like, oh, I might save Madoka. Madoka's just there. Saika's there. Kyoko's there. And even like Godoka is <laughs> just sort of like, 
Oh, this is a new and interesting story. I guess I'll just have to go along with it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll just put my way in the gotcha. You yeah. can pay for me. <laughs> whereas, yeah, whereas, yeah, Mummy, it did sort of, there was like a, a sort of interesting little reflection there. Because that, I mean, that's something that's popped up in some of the other extra media. Like there's that, there's that PSP game I've mentioned before where they do a bunch of different timelines, including the one that I like, which is Homer's perfect timeline, where she you know, speed runs the whole thing and gets it all right. But one of, them, one of the timelines is one where Mami finds out about the truth and witches out. Oh, yeah, and becomes a cool old Candeloro, who I like the design of a lot. And you have to fight a witch. Like, I think it kind of is established to some extent that if she did find out about the truth, she would freak out. Oh, yeah. But that in a way, yeah, in, in a way, the circumstances of this story meant she didn't have to. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> It's interesting. I don't know. It's it's as close as any of the original characters get to doing something interesting. Yeah. And and she's like kind of dealing with the guilt of like, you know, I got these girls into this not knowing just how bad it would be and all that. And there's actually some stuff that she has to grapple with. Yeah. It's just a shame that like in the anime, they completely made that dumb. <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez. I uh, can't wait for season two. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's coming. I don't know if we mentioned that or not, but it's definitely coming. Heck yeah. I also find it interesting. Some of the events that they did involving the original girls. There was that one with Godoka got an event, which I was sort of pumped for because I was I was really curious to see what they would do with her. And then the event was just the story of the original anime. Oh, that's right. Scene for scene. It's, it sucks. <laughs> what, a, yeah. what a fucking waste of time. Like, do something with that character. I don't know. You're just like, hey, remember the original story? Yes, I do. Cool Homura got an event as well, which was just like her and Kubei hanging out during the universe reworking itself at the end of the at the end of the anime. Yeah. Which was sort of interesting. Yeah, and I, I do like her looking at the Homer in this world and just being like, what are you doing? Why are you hanging out with all these other girls? Who are all these other girls? This is stupid. Why? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the worst thing, because like in the this version of the story, she's right. As in like Homer who's hanging out with all these other girls is right, because this is a universe where no one has to die and there's no witching, so it's all fine. Right. Which just didn't ever happen upon in any of the other timelines, I guess, theoretically. Yeah, because Uruba didn't step on a pebble or whatever it oh, was. Oh yeah, there's that whole thing. I don't know. <laughs> that, was, that was the diverging point. Like that, that is something that's kind of funny. In the proper timeline, Ui, Nemu, and Toka are all dead. <laughs> yeah. In Iroi, he's just a grieving sister who never got to be a magical girl. That's like, well, it's dark. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of the just ooh, ooh, nothing bad can happen stuff, the real insulting bit to me was like after yeah after the ending of Arc One, which just had the everyone's cool with Nemu and Toka. And everything they did and they don't have any regrets. When they got to this the uh, epilogue where Nemo and Toka tried to kill themselves, there was a bit where they, they re-established Samuasa that lets you see the future you really want. I forgot about that. And you go to Iroa's future and you see it. And it's a future where they did manage to spread it spread this system all across the world with no consequences. And everyone's happy and we're all here and everyone's alive. And even Cuba gets to come to the party because <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it was also like presented as like this is a Nuasa that lets us see the future and it's like oh I wonder why that never fucking came up during the main story you never had a use for that huh okay o okay yeah also it doesn't seem the, that Nuasa didn't seem particularly dangerous either you just see the future and it's fine okay? yeah I'm sure they would have figured uh, something out yeah probably god what was the deal with little Cuba again in the end I forget. See, that was the really funny thing. Because, you know, I said, I think I said this at some point during our t podcast about the show, but I thought that it was somehow Ui. Yeah. And then it was like, no, this is a Kyubei that we have depowered so that he's just this little guy who doesn't know what's up because they took all the like kyubei out of him into themselves so that they could do their thing. But but then it's like, like right before they put Ui in the monster form, they're like, it's, we'll put her memories in this little shell kyubei. And I was like, I knew it. <laughs> That's Ui up in there. I told you. <laughs> yeah. It made sense. So yeah, it's a it's a depowered Cubey, but also it's Ui. But the worst thing is that like during the ending event, that little Cubey sacrifices himself to become the core of something so that Yui can be freed or something or other. Oh yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, well it died. Well, that's sad. Then at the end, what happens? It shows up. <laughs> it's fine. It lived, and it's also it's a unit in the game now. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I forgot that was, that was very recent, right? Yeah, yeah. You can pull little Cubey and you can fight. And it's, it is kind of funny because, like, they don't up the size of his sprite or anything, so it is just this the normal disc that's taken up by a whole girl and it's just a tiny cubo. That's pretty cute. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. That's, I guess that's most of what we wanted to talk about with Magic Record. I kind of want to do a YouTube-only thing where I just talk about the designs and, like, gripe about them because I think that would be kind of funny. Um, but, obviously, <laughs> you need the visuals for that. 
We should do that gross thing that Mark Zuckerberg did with that website where we just take two photos of two girls and compare them and you have to rate them against each other. <laughs> <laughs> so who's the better one? Well, geez, if I, if I was going by pure visuals, who is the best girl? Mm. Hmm. That's a good question, actually. Yeah, it's like I would maybe actually to come to the I me. Why are you so stupid and not yeehaw at all? <laughs> <laughs> She's the one that appeals to you the most, but she's boring. Yeah, I also really like Rhea's art and Nanaka's. I mean, there's definitely there, there's good girls. Like those, I wouldn't change anything about their design. Yeah, there, there's some good designs in there. It's a lot of trash. Looking at the designs of all the girls from Arc 2, I don't think there's any <laughs> alike. I don't think there's a single one. Fuck, I have to make that YouTube video. Maybe I need to do like a part one and part two because, yeah, this is, some of these look like off-brand Toho girls. They're just fucking messes. <laughs> the, all that being said, the most criminal one is one that didn't, as far as I know, appear in the game. Or maybe she did, but she, she didn't originate in the game. And that's Chisato Shion. Oh, yeah, th this is from fucking Suzune. We're going to have to talk about that when we talk about the different manga. Yeah, because that's that's a proper fucking criminal design. Yeah, I mean, that's the same guy that fucking designed Kokoro, who also sucks, and how dare she be named Kokoro. <laughs> like, my good girl. <laughs> I will also say, I liked a lot of the witches, or the Yuasa. Yeah, see, that's the thing, right? It's Inukuri is, like, the head of the ship now, and what did they do good? They did good witch designs, and they still do good witch designs, and they're still cool. <laughs> like, Teresa? That was a cool wish. The one with the pendulum that would just sort of swing around really fast and then whack you. The Yuasa I liked most was the false memories one that was the big printer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I liked that thing, the forging machine. It made sense. I liked it. <laughs> It was cute, and it was also just like, that was such a, I mean, I, just, I like old mechanical stuff like that anyway, but it was just, the action it had on it was really satisfying. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it was good. Yeah, a lot of the Iwasa besides that were just kind of like, they felt like they were kind of phoned in. <laughs> yeah, the boot full of water was just sort of, <laughs> I did kind of like that its power was bad luck, so it didn't actually attack you, it just like rocks would fall on you, which they, they reused for the end of uh, season one of Magic Record, but. <laughs> yeah. God. God, I am very interested to see where the show goes with who the fuck Kuroe is and other stuff that doesn't line up with the game. Oh, yeah, I, I just want to know how they dig themselves out of this hole. Yeah. Why did you change the story this much and what for? <laughs> Do you know why you did it yet? <laughs> <laughs> or or, or well, are you still figuring that out? Yeah. Well, I don't know if we should talk their ear off any more than we already did. No, nah, that, that was enough rambling about this dumb game. Oh, yeah. Kuroe sucks. What a stupid outfit. Just... Uh, why is she, why does she exist? I still it, it brings me incredible joy that I was like Kuro is back and it took forever for you to understand who that was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was fair enough, wasn't it? No, absolutely. Cause yeah, she just, she was just not there anymore. Who the fuck is she? <laughs> <laughs> like to the point where I didn't even really notice the shot of her looking up at the end of the anime. Yeah, cause she does look generic. But who the fuck is she? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll find out, baby. Yeah. So now, yeah, as Cube mentioned at the start of the episode, we launched a Patreon. Yes. So if you sign up for the Patreon, it's mostly just to cover like our hosting costs. Because, you know, that's, that's a little bit of money. Yeah, I've learned that Libsyn, they, they fucking want some money to host your podcast. And I'm like, what? There isn't a free good service nowadays in 2020? Apparently not. You would think so, but the free services are always a bit janky and they take ages to download. Oh, yeah. And, and don't they like a lot of them like insert ads in the middle of your fucking podcast and stuff? That too. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. So yeah, but we have a Patreon and it's, wait, so is it just patreon.com slash anime slushy? Yep. Heck yeah, it is. And it's slushy with an IE because I know there's other ways you can spell it. If you sign up as well as just, you know, uh, having a gratitude, you will get each episode of anime slushy early by a certain amount of time. I'm not sure exactly how much time, but you'll get them early. 24 hours. Come on. That makes a lot of sense. It's got to be 24 <laughs> hours. You also get to vote on what we cover next because I don't know if you've noticed, but every time we sort of talk about, oh, we might do this, this, oh, we might do that next, half the time we just sort of forget what we said. <laughs> yeah. I now have officially diagnosed ADHD and that's totally why. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, you know, I think it, it will probably help me because sometimes I'm like, oh, I should do what this or this or this. And then I don't get around to doing any of them. But yeah. now you can force my hand by telling me which one to do. Exactly. Yeah. We'll put some options up for you guys and you can, and like, as always, you can suggest stuff to us. We won't always follow through on every suggestion just because, you know. Yeah. But yeah, we'll put some options up. You get to vote on what we cover next. But yeah, that, you know, play a part in, in, the, in the podcast. Yeah. Use your voice. Put in your vote. It's, it's a much less depressing thing that you can vote for this year. <laughs> well, you say that, but uh, <laughs> like, which awful anime do you want us to watch and feel bad about? 
I'm trying to work out some sort of stretch goal so that you guys can get me to make an anime music video for you. Look, you're going to have to show your chops. You need to make some examples of, of your AMV chops. I've got to finish off the lane one. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do a really sarcastic one where I take Ruby music and put it over Black Rock Shooter. Yeah, because I, I made Phoenix watch the OVA of Black Rock Shooter with, with me, which you should watch. And so now he understands all the ways in which Ruby is Black Rock Shooter. <laughs> <laughs> or was trying originally to be Black Rock Shooter. That OVA, it's very gay. Gotta tell it's you. gay as fuck. <laughs> I, I always forget how gay it is. I mean, they don't kiss. It's, it's anime gay, but like it's yeah. really anime gay. Yeah, it's pretty full on. And I've started rewatching the show and we'll cover it and it is nowhere near that level and it's very disappointing. Shameful. But anyway, yeah, sign up if you want to. Otherwise, have a good anime. What you say? <laughs> yeah, have a good anime, everybody. Yeah, see, I kept trying to push that subtly as a catchphrase and I was like, oh, I guess Phoenix doesn't like it. I guess it's never going to catch on. I'll force the issue. Have a good anime, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>